Good morning from another beautiful day here in Northern Bavaria. Today we are in Würzburg. We got here last night. We arrived at the hotel after dark and woke up to a surprise view of the fortress here in Würzburg. And we are looking forward to exploring there later on today. So we're gonna have a great day today. We got some restaurants picked out to visit to taste some of the cuisine here in Würzburg. And we have a couple of the major sites on our list to hit today. So it's gonna be an awesome day and we're looking forward to exploring this new city. downtown in Würzburg and we just finished our breakfast here at Cafe House Michel behind me. It was really good, great cappuccino. Of course I ordered vice first. I can't help myself every time I see it on the menu, it's what I have to get. Their waffles are really good as well. So it's a really, really great place. Now it's been here for 110 years and so it has a long history. It was destroyed during the war, rebuilt, remodeled a few times uh, with the intention of keeping its original charm. So it's got some great history. Unfortunately, I read this morning that actually tomorrow is the last day it's gonna be opened as Cafe House Michel that it's being sold to another the company so I guess we got here just in time to kind of explore that last piece of history for this cafe house but I'd love to recommend it to you if you come here I have no idea what's gonna happen with the new ownership but it was well worth it for us to uh, get to eat there and uh, get a coffee and get our day started Next to the Würzburg Dom, the Würzburg Cathedral, is another church, the Neumünster Cathedral. And there's another Baroque style church here, and it's got a really cool mixture of stuff inside. Yeah, I really liked actually the mix of the old and the new. It um, clearly was bombed, um, and they rebuilt a lot of it in the Baroque style, but there was also a lot of um, kind of newer, more modern style, um, abstract or impressionist type artwork. It was really, really beautiful and moving, kind of the contrast between the old and the new um, here was done really, really well. It felt like a living church for today, which was really beautiful. And we went down to the crypt, um, which was not obviously marked. I saw some other people walking down some stairs and it made me curious. So I went and looked too. Yeah, so down that crypt, um, which is worth going down, there was a statue in the corner and it was of a, a recent, a fairly recent pastor uh, of the church here or a priest from the church here from the time of World War II. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, yeah, he was also sent to a concentration camp and implied was because he was helping those who at the time Nazi Germany was trying to imprison or kill. And so it was a really moving uh, memorial to this pastor or priest. Really, it was quite moving. Yeah. It was touching. Yeah, so absolutely, because it's right next door to the uh, main cathedral here it's obviously easy to get to to visit so definitely stop by and check it out when you're in the area of the cathedral So this beautiful building behind me was commissioned by the Prince Bishop of Würzburg and completed in 1744. Apparently Napoleon one time called this the largest parsonage in the world. So it's got some history to it, of course. It is a beautiful, beautiful building that we're looking forward to checking out and enjoying inside. Certainly a must do here in the city of Würzburg. <laughs> 
It was heavily destroyed by Allied bombings in World War II and was rebuilt starting in 1945. And in 1981, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site due to its architecture and the Baroque art that's inside. So we're gonna go explore, take a look, and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful building. All right, so we just finished up inside the residence and I got good news and bad news. The good news is that it was beautiful. It was absolutely worth going in. I mean, the rooms were meticulously decorated, uh, great art, uh, great stucco designs. It's that Baroque and Rococo style uh, that I don't know a lot about, but it was absolutely beautiful. The tapestries, the paintings, I mean, everything about it was absolutely stunning. I mean you have to have to go here when you're in Vetsburg. Um, the sad part of it is how destroyed it was during World War II. The Allied bombings, there's another one of those 17 minutes of bombings that destroyed so much of the city, that destroyed so many lives, killed over 5,000 people, and that's, that's horrible. And so it's so sad to see some of the destruction that happened. Uh, it is really nice that they include some of the pictures from the destruction of World War II. So you can really get an idea of what the city looked like uh, when that bombing happened. So you can see what it looked like before, you can see what it looked like right after the bombing, and then you can see what it was reconstructed to look like. And they did a fabulous job with the reconstruction. Like I said before, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1981 uh, because of of the architecture because of the art and everything that's in there. And again, it's worth it. It deserves it because it is beautiful. Bad news, you can't film inside there. So I can't show any shots from the inside because I didn't want to be sneaky and try to get some shots and then get yelled at by anybody from Würzburg. So uh, no filming inside, no pictures inside. So you have to come here yourself and see it. And I absolutely recommend it. Right after we came out, we came into the back here, into the gardens, and this is such a nice peaceful area to walk around in, to just enjoy the fresh air, the beautiful outside of the building, and the beautiful plant life back here too. So you come to Würzburg, this is absolutely 100% a must do on your list. just walking along the walls of the residence. I love this view uh, from this spot. I think you can see all the details very beautifully and all the colors from the different flowers and plants I think is really beautiful. I think my favorite rooms inside of the residence were the mirror room, uh, the prince's hall and the emperor's hall. I especially loved uh, the Emperor's Hall. I thought the painting on the ceilings were gorgeous. Of course, you'd have to come here yourself to see it, and I would definitely recommend it because it is just all around a very, very beautiful place. So we are finishing up our day here at Back Ophelia, a restaurant that came highly recommended. And the food just came and it looks amazing. So we are ready to enjoy some good Franconian food for some of us, schnitzel for others. It looks amazing, it smells amazing. So we're gonna dig in, enjoy it, finish off our evening here. There are a few more things we're gonna do tomorrow morning and enjoy Würzburg and then we'll move on to the next city.
So we just arrived here at Marienberg Fortress, a symbol of Würzburg. And to get up here, you can either walk up here, which from the center of town, I think takes about 20, 25 minutes, or there is actually public transportation. And that's what we decided to do so we didn't have to walk up here with the kids. Um, but the bus that comes up here is more of a van, as we'd call it in the US. In Germany, they still call it a bus, but it's really small. It was packed full. I'm standing in the doorway and now I'm drenched in sweat because it was hot. But we did save all that time walking. I probably would have been sweaty from, you know, walking up here anyway. So it's just something to deal with. But we are excited to see the fortress up here. It was originally built in Baroque and Renaissance styles between the 16th and 18th century. In 1631, during the Thirty Years' War, it was actually uh, taken over and remodeled to be fully Baroque. During World War II, it was, of course, heavily destroyed and it was only finished being rebuilt in 1990. In addition to the, the history of the fortress, inside there's actually two museums, one dealing with the history of the Franconian region and one with the 1200 year history of Würzburg. So we're excited to get in there, check out these museums, look at this amazing fortress and enjoy our last day here in Würzburg. So we're up here exploring the grounds of Marienberg Fortress and you can see behind me the views from up here are absolutely stunning. You can see the entire city of Würzburg, all the famous landmarks down there are clear to see from up here. It is gorgeous. Just coming up here for the views of the outside of the fortress so far and the views of the city, 100% must do it. Come on up here, it is amazing.
we're about to head into the Würzburg Cathedral, the Dom St. Kilian here in Würzburg. Uh, it's another iconic spot here in the city. It's actually the fourth largest Romanesque cathedral in Europe and it is absolutely beautiful. It was built around 1040 to 1075 in the Romanesque style, but then was remodeled with Baroque style elements in, I believe, the 1700s. Most of the building collapsed due to damage sustained during the war and was rebuilt starting in 1967. But when they rebuilt it, they rebuilt it with the Romanesque style again. So um, from what I understand, it's interesting to go inside and see because you have some of the Baroque style elements that were remodeled in the 1700s and then the Romanesque style again from the recent remodel. So uh, again, another classic landmark here in Würzburg and we're gonna go check it out. Würzburg really is an amazing city and we really enjoyed our time here. I highly recommend visiting if you're in northern Bavaria. The city is so beautiful and so worth spending some time in. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have more videos from our travels coming up soon and more videos about life as an American family living in Germany.